Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Baba Bagade Imo TV. I am Mori Ray Rabila Lawal. First are the major headlines for the world news. Buhari's minister visits family of top NTA staff killed by train in Abuja. Biafra Odudua Republic will come to pass. Primates Ayodele. DSS deploys operatives to arrest CBN governor Emefiele. Seven police officers dismissed over extortion illegal searching. Bleak Christmas in Nigerian capital Abuja as traders' residents laments. Court sentences Okada Rider to 20 years in prison for making love with a girl. Still on the airlines from Ondo State, Ondo Court remains man for abducting, making love with another girl. 37 victims of Kaura Kaduna attack buried amidst tears. And to foreign story, Togo President sacks Army Minister and Army Chief. Finally, on sports, Igalos Al Ilal to represent Asia in 2022 FIFA Club World Cup tournament. Now, the news in detail. Barely 24 hours after the report of Sahara reporters on the failure of Nigerian government officials to visit the family of late Selim Mutu Idohu, a principal accountant with the Nigeria and Television Authority NTA who was crossed to death by a passenger train in Abuja, the Minister of State for the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Ramatou Tijani Aliyu, on Friday visited the bereaved family. The belated visit, which is coming eight days after the tragic incident, can be described as an apt thought by the minister. The minister, while consoling with the family, said the Federal Capital Territory Administration had taken steps and reached out to the Minister of Transports to expedite action in the construction of the overhead bridge in the area. She also promised to assist and support the family. We have put in place a strong committee that will help on advocacy to enlighten us on the danger of crossing particularly the pedestrians, the danger of the effect of the magnetic effect of train itself. Moving on to the next story. The leader of INRI, Evangelical Spiritual Church, Primate Elijah Ayodele, has released his 2023 predictions on what will happen around the political scene in 2023. Primate Ayodele disclosed that the time has come for an Igbo president despite agitations for Biafra by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP. He said God revealed to him that if the Labour Party LP presidential candidate, Peter Obi, win, his government would be for the poor while the rich would complain. In a statement by spokesman Olua Tosin Osho, Ayodele said 2023 will be an unexpected year, adding that most Nigerians would sell their votes due to poverty. Stressing that a date for elections may change in 2023, Ayodele said Biafra and Odudua Republic agitators would discourage their members from participating in the poll. Security must be tightened and deployed to every vital part of the country during the election. The 2023 election will cost the Nigerian government financially multiple folds of what it has ever spent on elections in the past. Money will determine the coming elections. Nigeria will not vote their conscience in 2023, but their stomach. It is no money, no votes. To the next story. The Department of State Services has started exercising a be on the lookout for Governor Godwin Emefiele of the Central Bank of Nigeria, according to two officials familiar with the matter. Consequently, the Domestic Intelligence Office has deployed several officers to monitor the CBN headquarters, Mr. Emefiele's family house rest in Lagos, and the Abuja home of businessman Christopher Emefiele, unrelated by blog. An SSS officer familiar with the matter said the deployment came from an assistant director and could not immediately say whether or not Director General Yusuf Bichi signed off on it. We have different teams of at least two each monitoring those places, the officer said, under anonymity to disclose costly specific of an ongoing operation. We don't know if they have more people deployed to even more places, but we did not see any signal from the DG's office to suggest his involvement at this point. The officers were still quietly monitoring the locations as of Saturday morning, according to People's Gazette. The development comes as Mr. Mayfield's whereabouts became fuzzy after learning of an active threat to take him into custody by the SSS. 
The agency also successfully sought a warrant from the Federal High Court earlier this month with the federal judge ruling that sufficient probable cause was not established for the issuance of a warrant against a sitting governor of the nation's banker and foremost regulator of the banking sector. Moving on to the next story. The Imo State Police Command has dismissed seven police officers over alleged extortion and checking of phones of a citizen at a bank in Umaya, Abia State Capital. According to a report obtained by the Nigerian Voice, the policemen were arrested on November 8, 2022 at 1 p.m. at a bank in Umaya for illegal DT and extortion of an innocent citizen. The development is coming after the Inspector General of Police, Baba Usman, on August 8, 2022, expressed disappointment with a report of brutality and extortion against some police officers. The IGP had subsequently overhauled the Intelligence Response Team, IRT, the Special Tactics Team, STS, and the Special Weapon and Tactics, SWAT, units to ensure that their operations are in tandem with the purpose for their creation and maximum effectiveness. It will be recalled that the ex-policemen were arrested on 8 November 2022 at about 1 p.m. in a bank at Umayya Abia State in the course of performing illegal DT outside their jurisdiction and conspiracy to extort money from an innocent citizen. Moving on to the next story from Abuja. The increase in the palm prices of petroleum and rising food prices, among other factors, have made this year's Christmas season unpleasant for most residents of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The prices of foodstuffs such as rice, tomatoes, meat, turkey, and chicken have continued to soar beyond the reach of the masses in the FCT with hours to Christmas, our reports learned. Several reporters spoke with some market women in some major places in the FCT metropolis, including Gubwa, Dede, and Wuse areas, as they reviewed our prices of the commodities and recorded over 70% increments. Some consumers also recounted how the economic pressure had forced them to cut down on their purchase for the festive season. Olufumi Fanwa said prices of everything have increased in the market. I can't buy everything I plan to buy. In fact, I will be spending twice what I spent last year's Christmas during a year ago less. And to the next story. A Kwaibom State High Court in Uyo had sentenced a 36-year-old commercial motorcycle operator, locally known as Okada, to 20 years in prison for making love with a girl. The convict, Aneti Basi Etim, a native of Ikot Itie Undong, in Isit Atai, local government area was said to have taken the victim who boarded his motorcycle to a church on a lonely path where he defiled her consecutively. Justice Gabriel Ete, in his judgment, found the rapist guilty and committed him to 20 years in prison. He was to spend the next 20 years in prison having found guilty of the act. Justice Ete ruled. Moving on to Ondo states. A magistrate court in Ondo State has remanded a 36-year-old man, Akinfala Babatunde, for allegedly abducting and making love with a 17-year-old girl. The police prosecutor, Aji Boye of Badasa, told the court on Friday that Babatunde had gone to the victim's house at Odede Idori, in the Idori local government area of the state in the night, and abducted her to his house where he made the act. Obasa alleged that Babatunde took the teenager from her parents' house to his residence and I indecently assaulted her, adding that the victim's parent reported the case at the police station after some neighbors called them on phone. He said that offenses contravene sections 226 bracket 1, 360 bracket 361, 351 of the criminal code law of Ondo State. Obasa said the subject was arrested at his residence at Agoshile Street, Odede Idore, following a report lodged by the victim's mother on the disappearance of her daughter at a police station. The accused was later arraigned before the court sitting in Idori on a four-count charge bordering on abduction and assault, sexual, Obadasa concluded. The defendant, however, pleaded not guilty to the charge against him. And to the next story from Kaduna State. It was a sad day in Malagum and Sakong communities, Kaura local council of Kaduna State on Friday as hundreds of villagers gathered to bury victims of an attack in the area earlier in the week. They were killed on Sunday by a suspected militia group. The arrival of the truck carrying the victim's casket triggered an outpour of emotions 
as relatives and friends wept helplessly. Children aged men and women as well as youth were among those who leave, whose lives were put off in the prime by the attackers. Hundreds of people were gathered for the funeral service including relations, religious leaders and politicians called on the government and security agencies to stop the attacks before they are completely wiped out. During the funeral service, church authorities denounced the attack, maintaining that the government must do more to protect citizens. The Catholic Bishop of Kafanchan Diocese, Most Reverend Julius Kundu, in his sermon, faulted the government, saying it has failed to discharge its constitutional responsibility of protecting the lives and property of the citizens. And to foreign story. Togolese President Foray Nasingbe has sacked the country's armed forces minister and appointed a new chief of staff as part of a major military reshuffle announced on the state's television. The presidential decrees announced late Thursday specify no reason for the reshuffle, but the changes came as the small West African country faces a growing threat from jihadist group. Since November 2021, Togo has suffered at least five attacks, including two deadly ones in the far north of the country, which is plagued by jihadist incursions from across the border in Burkina Faso. The president is relieved, I beg your pardon, the general is relieved of her duties as armed forces minister, the fourth presidential decree stated, saying she has been called to other duties. No replacement will be named as armed forces will be answerable directly to the presidency under the orders of the president, as was the case from 2007 to 2020, another decree stated. And to the final story on sports. Odion Igalo Saudi Arabian Club Al Hilal will represent Asia at the 2022 FIFA Club World Cup. It will be the second time Igalo will be participating in the competition with Raman Diaz's side. Morocco will host the competition between February 1st to 11th, with the final of the AFC Champions League to be played in April and May. The continent's soccer government has decided to nominate Al Hilal to represent Asia as the current AFC Champions League title holders. That ends the world news from BGI TV this hour. Before we go, some major headlines. Buhari's minister visit family of top NTA staff killed by train in Abuja. Biafra Odudua Republic will come to pass. Primates are really claims. DSS deploy operatives to arrest CBN Governor Godwin Emefile. And on sports, Igalos Alila to represent Asia in 2022 FIFA Club World Cup. For more updates on YouTube, our handle is Babagade Emo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Babagade Emo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page. On Instagram, Babagade Emo underscore 22. For advert placement of goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placement only. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Ray. Rebila Lawa and happy Xmas in advance to all faithful Christians all around the world.